I was born in South Korea. I'm half Korean. Um, uh, my mother was Korean. And then uh, spent most of my early years in California, in the in South Bay, in the Bay Area. Kids, most kids draw, right? They, they, they're very creative, most kids, and, they, and they'll draw, they'll color in coloring books, and I drew all the time, and, and, and I do little plays with my friends. As life goes on, it's a point where most kids stop drawing, right? And they just sort of get sort of more serious about life and other things and sports or whatever they're, they're doing. And I just kind of kept drawing. And I think that happens to a lot of artists, that they just don't stop. The first time that I saw Bill Carman's work, or even heard of Bill Carman for that matter, was one fine afternoon when I was having lunch with the president and the director of the Society of Illustrators with uh, a wonderful artist, Daniel Merriam. And there was a little show uh, on, on a wall in, the, um, uh, in one of the galleries, and it was a show that was small works. And Daniel and I walked across the room, and we went right to Bill's painting. And Daniel said, oh my god, this guy can paint. I get this question a lot. What what inspires you? What is your what do you your inspiration? And and I always think that if you, if you can't be inspired, when you just get up and wake up and start using your brain, then you really have no business being in the arts in any kind of a field with you know creativity involved. I've seen probably uh, hundreds of thousands of painters, and he's one of the finest painters that's walked the planet, in my opinion. His levels of skill, his intelligence levels, his, the way he thinks, uh, but definitely his ability to lay down paint. So I learned to paint with acrylic paints, and then I went to oils for years and did oil painting exclusively for years. And then I discovered new acrylic paints that have beautiful pigment content and color and came back to acrylics a little safer to work with. And, um, but I will sometimes finish paintings with oil, um, depending on what kind of a surface I want or what kind of a treatment I want. We, we see patterns and interruptions in pattern. And I think that's where a lot of his humor comes from, is the divergent thought that occurs. We love water. Oh, love octopus and squid. Um, we do a lot of things as a family when I was young. And going to the beach was one of them. We'd go to Moss Landing and go fishing, you know, off the off the beach and you know I cast out and, and I hooked something and I was all excited and just really and I got something this big and I reeled it in and it was a can, a soup can. Thought, oh, you know, and so that of course they started laughing at me. And all of a sudden out of the can spilled legs. And and if you've ever seen an octopus on land, it just spills and flops and flows. It just unfolded itself, squirted some ink. It just came out of the can and I was an immediate hero. We had fresh octopus to take home and have. And there are very few things more beautiful in the water than an octopus, the way they change color and move and flow. His highlights, his shadow, uh, the way he can carve a form out with just a suggestion of a highlight or a low light. Um, he really understands how to create three-dimensional form, especially in such a small space. Extraordinary technique, the kind of uh, ability that is uh, not easy to achieve, unless you, you practice and you work and work and work. And you know, then that, coupled with his extraordinary imagination, it just made him someone who knocked my socks off. <laughs> I 
I never give up that that creative kind of energy, that thing that, that, that just moved me all that time and, and knew I would have to do. It was going to be either music or it was going to be, you know, uh, the visual arts and it turned out to be the visual arts.